Welcome to the first set of videos for the fifth readings of, on Aristotle, the fifth of Aristotle's readings. Um, these will be on the soul, um, these, these set of videos, but before we turn to that, I would like to discuss um, Aristotle's division of philosophy or the kinds of knowledge. And um, in this, you're gonna have to look at handout six. So go back to handout six. Um, make sure that you have it in front of you, and we're going to be looking at the second page of handout six, um, this section on Aristotle's division of philosophy. So this is drawn from Metaphysics six, Book 6, Chapter 1. Um, and the idea here um, is that um, there are three different kinds of um, sciences. So in Aristotle's day, and, and all the way up until really just recently, um, philosophy just was uh, the sciences and knowledge and all of human knowledge. So all of human knowledge incorporated philosophy. Um, and Aristotle divides human knowledge up into um, productive, practical, and theoretical branches. Um, and the main division here is productive branches of knowledge um, deal with sciences that are useful for making something. Um, they're, um, they're, they're usually referred to as arts or crafts, um, where um, these, are, these are for the sake of, of doing something practical. So you could have um, an art or a craft, um, what will be, what, what's called a techne, a techne. Um, of say uh, writing speeches or composing plays or um, weaving baskets or cooking food. Um, but all of these would be examples of productive arts um, for which the science would be a techne um, or a craft or an art. Um, and you can see this Greek word techne in our, in our contemporary word technology. Right. Um, our technology word technology technology there we go um, that technology is a uh, um, comes from that Greek word techne um, and that refers to technical technical sciences um, they're productive they teach you how to make something how to how to create something we'll come back to techne um, in a few meetings um, the next science is practical sciences. So these are going to include um, sciences that address how human beings should live um, or answer what's the best life for human beings. Um, and these are going to include ethics or morals um, and politics. Um, so how individuals should live, how I, you or I individually individually should live, that's ethics or morals, and then how we should live together as a body politic, right? So a polis, a polis is a city for the Greeks, um, and politics was the science of life in a polis, right? Life together, social life, or how we should relate to one another. And so that's where our word politics comes from. Um, and so practical, uh, practical sciences um, concerned how human beings ought to live, either on their own, how I should live, how you should live, um, how I should lead my life, um, sort of irrespective of other people, that's ethics. I mean, it might, it might relate to other people, but it's really directed towards me, or how we should all live together communally in one body politic, or politic. Finally, there were theoretical sciences, or what sometimes get called contemplative or speculative sciences. And that's what we've sort of been focused on in this class. Um, and Aristotle in this chapter divides theoretical sciences up into three branches. Um, and these are gonna correspond to physics, mathematics, and metaphysics. And physics is what he calls separate and changing. 
Mathematics is what he calls not separate nor changing, and metaphysics is separate and unchanging. Okay, well, what, is, what does it mean to be separate or not separate? What does it mean to be changing or unchanging? Well, if something is separate, then it has existence on its own. What, according to Aristotle, has existence on its own? Think now back to the categories. What is it on Aristotle's account that has its own existence in that division of the categories? You got it? Well, if you'd said substance, then you'd be right. Substances are separate. They have their own existence. They're not present in other things. Right. So anything that's not present in is going to have, is going to be separate. It's going to have its own existence. Um, mathematical beings, however, are not separate. Why? Well, um, they're in, they're present in other things. So circularity, so I suppose this is a plate, right? It's a plate, right? This plate, circularity is in it. That's present in the plate. And so being a circle is not, to be a circle is not to have separate existence. Why? Well, because to exist, circularity has to be in some object out in the world, like the plate. So um, mathematical beings, like circles, are not separate from empirical beings of physics, like plates, or, 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 or balls, or water bottles or whatever, right? All the shapes are present in um, physical beings, right? So balls are spheres, my water bottle is a cylinder. Um, and the way that we arrive at these mathematical beings, the way that we formulate what they are is by abstracting away from change and abstracting away from the dimensions of the physical thing, um, that depend on it and, and isolating only the mathematical part of it. Um, and so um, physical objects like the plate, right? Um, they're separate and changing. So they exist on their own, they're substances, um, and they change. The plate can, can be broken, right? Um, and, and so it changes. And so physical objects are gonna be substances that change like plates or my water bottle. Um, whereas mathematics is not gonna be separate. It's gonna study circles, cylinders, um, numbers. Um, and those objects don't change, right? They're present in physical objects, but they're not gonna change. What a circle is doesn't change. It's a line whose points are equidistant from a center point, and that will never change. And so mathematical objects, they're not separate, nor are they changing. Metaphysics. What is metaphysics? So Aristotle says that it is separate and unchanging. Um, so it's like mathematics in that it doesn't change. The things studied in metaphysics are like circles and squares and cylinders in that they don't change, they're eternal, but they're also separate. They also exist independently of the, the physical things in the world, right? So they're gonna be things with their own self-standing existence. They're gonna be substances too. Now, one way to think about metaphysics, so I mean, the title of the work, Metaphysics, I mean, that's what this section is from. The title of the work, Metaphysics, comes from the traditional medieval ordering of Aristotle's works. So the works that came before the, came, came after the physics were the metaphysics, right? So the metaphysics is what comes after the, um, that's, that's the scholastics who came up with this name. 
Um, but metaphysics, this topic, also sometimes gets called first philosophy. It's sort of the thing that, that, that um, we study first, that has to be true first, that's separate and unchanging, and that on which, you know, physical things, the physical world, is often seen to depend. And that can include theology. So it can include, can include things like the nature of God, right? God is separate and unchanging. God is a substance. God doesn't depend on anything else for its existence. It isn't, God isn't present in anything else. Um, God also is eternal, right? So God is unchanging. Or God is outside of time. God doesn't change. Either way you cut it, right? Um, and so God is going to be one of the traditional topics of metaphysics. You might also think of the Christian soul as an immortal being, right? So immortal souls, those are going to be unchanging and separate. Why? Well, they're immortal, so they, they're eternal. And often it's thought that souls themselves don't change. They come into contact with bodies, but that's not a way they change. They, they're the thing that sort of subsists separately and unchanging. And so often, souls are a topic for metaphysics. But you might also think of things like laws of nature. Right, like everything that happens has a cause. That's also something that is unchanging, right? I mean, it's, 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 it will never be the case, it's often thought, um, that something happens and there isn't a cause for that thing. And so that's a kind of law of nature. It's not like the law of gravitation, um, which depends on the physical world. It's, it's something like a definition of causality, right? It's sort of, um, has to do with what causality is. And that's also often thought of as belonging to metaphysics, as belonging to um, what, uh, what determines the nature of the separate and changing things. So, so there'll be maybe laws of nature. Let's put a, let's put a question mark by that. Okay. Um, so that'll give, that gives you some sense of the three major divisions of the kinds of um, philosophy, productive, practical, and theoretical. And then within the theoretical sciences, Aristotle's dividing that up into physics, mathematics, and metaphysics, where physics studies what's separate and changing, mathematics studies what's not separate nor changing, and where metaphysics studies what's separate and unchanging. Um, you might notice also, I mean, if you think back to physics book two, I think chapter six, um, chapter seven might have also talked about, there were, th there too, we get these distinctions between separate and changing. And there too, Aristotle is drawing on this division of the theoretical sciences into physics, mathematics, and metaphysics. So there you have it. That's Aristotle's division of philosophy.